Hello everyone, welcome to the video on error handling best practices for the Selling Partner API. When calling the Selling Partner APIs, you may have encountered client-side errors, commonly known as 4xx errors. This video will help you understand the different 4xx errors and how to handle them effectively. When you receive a client-side 4xx error, it's crucial is to analyze the following conditions. Is there an issue with the request itself? Are all my selling partner customers experiencing the same issue? Is the selling partner active in the designated marketplace? To determine this, the best approach is to consistently log the following information for each HTTP request. By logging this information, you're creating records that can be reviewed at any time to help you identify issues. Setting up an error monitoring and alerting system is an important step in error handling. Review the video How to Build a Well-Architected SP API Application in the playlist for more details on how to set up an error monitoring and alerting system. There are four prominent categories of client-side errors that you could receive from the Selling Partner API. 400 Invalid Input 403 Unauthorized API Calls 404 Resource Not Found and 429 Throttled Errors 500 Errors are Amazon Server Errors and are not developer issues. It's important to note that all 4xx errors, except 429, cannot be retried without taking corrective action. Both 429 and 500 errors can be retried without modifying the request. Let's delve deeper into each error code and discuss best practices for handling them. Handling 400 errors. When you receive a 400 error, it indicates invalid input. Key things to consider are Request issues. Verify that the request URL query parameters, and request body align with the SP API documentation. Ensure all information is accurate and abides by the API's requirements. SP API requires requests to be consistent with HTTP RFC 7230. If you receive a 400 status code with an HTML response instead of a standard SP API response body, make sure your requests follow RFC 7230. Check for common mistakes, including body or content length header for GET requests, duplicate or malformed host headers. Verify correct usage of Next tokens for applicable APIs. Permissions and credentials. Confirm that the seller account in your request has an active status. This can be checked by the seller, under Performance, Account Health page on Seller Central. If a seller account has not been used for 90 or more days, the account will be marked dormant, and the seller will be advised to update their credit card in Seller Central. You can also get the seller account status programmatically using Account Status Changed Notification A notification is sent whenever the account status changes for seller and marketplace pairs. By implementing this notification type, developers receive a notification whenever the merchant's account status changes between normal, at risk, or deactivated. Get V2 Seller Performance Report this report type contains individual performance metrics data from the Seller Central Account Health Dashboard. If any metrics are not in good status, ask the seller to check their account status in Seller Central for further information. You can use Get Marketplace Participations operation in Seller's API to determine which marketplaces a seller is participating in. By combining the account status changed and Get V2 Seller Performance Report with the Seller's API, you can determine which marketplaces the seller participated in, whether the account is active in this marketplace, and whether there are any indications of poor account performance. Application Configuration Ensure application is configured correctly and has valid OAuth setup and redirect URI in the App Registration page in Seller Central. API Requirements there are some cases specific to an API where you might get a 400 error. Amazon Fulfillment API A 400 exception can be returned if the seller has not signed up for fulfillment by Amazon. Merchant Fulfillment API A 400 exception can be returned if fulfillment via API is attempted after the order has been shipped, and other special cases like insufficient funds, invalid ship from address and invalid shipping service offer. Please review the error code section in the MFN Use Case Guide for possible error codes and corresponding reasons. Reports API A 400 exception can be thrown if a report that can only be requested is scheduled. For example, the Get Merchant Listings All Data Report can only be requested. Requesting a settlement report can also result in a 400 exception. Settlement reports cannot be requested or scheduled. They are automatically scheduled by Amazon. 
Feeds API. Mismatching content types between creating a feed document and uploading the feed data can cause a 400 exception. When updating price and quantities, if the listing is absent in the seller account, an invalid input error will be returned. Fulfillment Outbound API. You may receive an invalid value error if you use the API in an unsupported marketplace. Handling 403 Errors. When you receive a 403 error, that stands for unauthorized and is usually related to access. Focus on these key areas. Valid credentials. Verify that all the access credentials are valid and not expired. There are three main credentials used with the Selling Partner APIs. Log in with Amazon LWA Client Credentials, LWA Refresh Token and LWA Access Token, and they have different requirements and expiration timelines. It's important to abide by each of these to access the APIs. LWA Client Credentials there is a client ID and client secret associated with every selling partner API application and client secret needs to be rotated for all applications every 180 days. You can rotate your client secrets programmatically using the rotate application client secret operation. You will get a 403 if you fail to rotate your credentials in time and use an expired client secret. You can check the expiry date of the client secret in the developer console as well. LWA Refresh Token if you are a public developer, the seller must authorize your app using Selling Partner App Store authorization or website authorization workflow to obtain a LWA refresh token. If you are a private developer, you can self-authorize your app and get the refresh token. Refresh token is long-lived token that you can exchange with access token, and the selling partner must reauthorize the application every 365 days. LWA access token. Access Token is a short-lived token generated using Refresh Token which is valid for one hour. An Access Token is obtained through a token exchange with Refresh Token and must be included with calls to all selling partner API operations, except restricted operations and grantless operations. After an Access Token is issued, it is valid for one hour. The same Access Token can be used for multiple API calls until it expires. Grantless Operation a grantless operation is an operation that you can call without explicit authorization from a selling partner. Access token for grantless operation is obtained using scope without providing a refresh token. This access token can be only used for grantless operations. Restricted operations. A restricted data token, RDT, is used in restricted operations to fetch personal identifiable information data, such as shipping address, buyer name, or tax-related information. An RDT can only be retrieved via the token's API. Let's go over the usage of different tokens in Postman. LWA Client Credentials and LWA Refresh Token is used to obtain a LWA Access Token from the LWA Authentication Server. For a grantless operation, Scope is used to get Access Token instead of a Refresh Token from the LWA Authentication Server. For restricted operations, Token's API is used. For example, if you need to retrieve shipping address information from the get orders operation, you must first use the access token to request an RDT via the token's API, and then call the get orders operation using the RDT as access token. Role access. Verify your application has the correct role for the API call, check your developer profile and application in the developer console to verify you have access to the required roles. For example, if you are planning to call fulfillment-related APIs like Fulfillment Inbound APIs or Fulfillment Outbound, you would need Amazon Fulfillment Role. Refer to different roles in Docs and find the applicable role for each operation. If you need access to a new role, you will need to resubmit your developer profile with the new role added. Region Mismatch Ensure that the seller account you are making the request to and the request endpoint are in the same region. The selling partner application is global, but seller accounts are region-specific, so make sure to use the correct endpoints. Account Status Verify that the seller account in your request has a healthy status. You can get a 403 if the seller is not participating in that marketplace. Handling 404 Errors When you encounter a 404 error, it usually means resource not found. This error typically stems from two main areas. Region Support Check if the specific API is available in that particular marketplace, because not all resource paths are available for every marketplace. 
You can check in the documentation if the API operation is available for select marketplaces. If the API operation is restricted to a marketplace, it will be explicitly called out in the documentation. Resource validity, check values of resources passed in the request body and query parameters to make sure it is all valid and conforms with the API documentation. In case of IDs, such as shipment ID or Amazon order ID passed in the request, make sure the resources exist and are valid. 404 is returned when you are calling with a specific resource that doesn't exist or the operation is not valid for the resource. Handling 429 errors. The 429 error is generated when the rate limit is exceeded for a particular request. Unlike other error codes, you can resubmit the failed requests as is, without changes, as long as you comply with the rate limits. To handle 429 errors effectively, consider the following strategies. Check and adhere to rate limits. Review the usage plan for the API, static versus dynamic, in the API documentation and compare it against the rate limit header, x Amazon rate limit limit, returned in the API response. Design your application to stay within the rate limits to avoid being throttled with 429 errors. Avoid spiky traffic. Distribute your traffic accordingly so you don't heavily hit the same API operations within a short time, followed by sparse traffic later. These uneven spikes will cause more 429 errors, which can be easily avoided by spreading out the traffic over time. Implement retry and backoff techniques. Proactively implement retry and exponential backoff techniques to avoid impact on your workloads and increase the reliability of your application. Retry. Implement automatic retry logic with a small delay and queuing between requests. Exponential backoff. Use an exponential backoff algorithm for better flow control, with progressively longer waits between retries for consecutive error responses. Jitter. Employ jitter, a random amount of time before making or retrying a request, to help prevent large bursts by spreading out the arrival rate. Reduce the number of API requests. Implement alternate mechanisms to minimize the number of API requests. Batch operations. Get data for a batch of items in a single request. Bulk options. Utilize reports and data kiosk for bulk download and feeds for bulk upload to retrieve or upload large volume of data in a single request. Event-based workloads. Monitor notifications using the Selling Partner API for notifications and perform actions based on specific conditions. Other best practices. Monitor your usage and scale accordingly as your application grows. Optimize your code to eliminate any unnecessary API calls. Cache frequently used data to reduce the need for repeated API requests. You can cache data on your servers using object-level storage like Amazon S3. You can also save relatively static information in a database or serialize it in a file. Stagger SP API requests in a queue and do other processing tasks while waiting for the next queued job to run. Mastering SP API error handling is key to building resilient applications. By carefully examining the areas we've discussed and implementing robust error handling strategies, you'll be well equipped to swiftly resolve most client-side issues. Refer to the resource links provided in the description below for additional guidance. Thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe to SP API channel for more videos and content.